This is a Science 21 New York State K-12 Science Learning Standards Elementary Level Assessment Briefing for May 2022. Hi, I'm David Jacob. I'm in the Regional Science Coordinator at PNW BOCES, and you can follow Science 21 on Twitter or on our YouTube channel. Let's first set the context for what's changed in science education in New York State. So our first graphic here shows us the three dimensions of the new science standards here in New York State. The first dimension is the science and engineering practices, also abbreviated as SEPs. What I've highlighted is three specific science and engineering practices. They're not the most important, but they are things that are kind of new for our science learning standards. The first one is asking questions or defining problems. Asking questions is what we do in science and defining problems is what we do for engineering. In the asking questions, it's really foundation of all of our science learning and so is defining problems in engineering. But if we look to our uh, Danielson work about asking questions and asking higher level questions of each other. This is one of the practices that as students gauge, engage in their science practices, they can really work a lot deeper. The second one is developing and using models. This is a spatial skill for students to be able to think through an idea that they can draw or they can draw a model of and being able to revise that model over and over again is a spatial way of dealing with some very complex things that the students may not quite have the sentence structure or even the vocabulary to start with, but they can visualize it and they can start to draw it by using arrows to show relationships between the components within the models. The third one is planning and carrying out investigations. By planning, we want students to start thinking through how they might be able to work with it with, with an investigation and try to figure out the answers to one of the problems that they asked earlier in the lesson. By planning, we want students to start thinking about the variables that they are considering and the number of trials that they're working with as well. This planning part is a really important part uh, of the thinking process. The other practices are really important as well, but we know that analyzing and interpreting data may show up in their math standards as well, uh, as long as well as with um, using mathematical and computational thinking. Constructing explanations um, is a part that may be part of their ELA, along with engaging an argument from evidence and obtaining, evaluating, communicating information. The one that I skipped over there was the designing solution, which is matches very well with our divine design defining problems. Being able to design a solution is an important aspect of the engineering process as well. Our next dimension is the cross-cutting concepts or sometimes abbreviated to the cross-cutting or to the CCCs. I've highlighted two of the seven cross-cutting concepts, not because they're most important, but they're the ones that show up in almost every single grade level K through 12. Patterns is being able to look at data or look at uh, a phenomenon out in nature and being able to see the similarities and differences that happen. In cause and effect, we're looking for a relationship between what something, when something happens and what causes that thing from happening. Is that really causing something or is it just correlational? The other of the cross-cutting concepts are also really very important as well, but they may be ones that are unfamiliar to teachers and they need to become familiar with. The third dimension is the disciplinary core ideas are also abbreviated as DCIs. These four components, the physical sciences, the life sciences, the earth space sciences, and the engineering technology and application of science are all the science core ideas that we work with. And I used specifically core ideas and not content because content tends to, allev or tends to uh, suggest a list of facts or a list of ideas that they need to memorize and be able to give back on a test. Disciplinary core ideas are a little bit different in the ideas, what's at the heart of the discipline that the students are studying. And this is what we're looking for students to get through. So these three dimensions are the core of everything in the New York State Science, New York State K-12 Science Learning Standards. The next major change that we're looking at is sense making. And in sense making, we're looking for students to be able to use the science and engineering practices that they've developed K through five, um, look at the disciplinary core ideas that they may come into the class with, or some misconceptions that they may have coming into the class about the disciplinary core ideas, and their knowledge of and use of the cross-cutting concepts as they are then working in their science work. 
what we like to do is put a phenomenon or a problem in front of students. And that's just not a like to do. That is a requirement of these new science standards. In the assessments that we'll be talking about a little bit later in this presentation, you'll see that phenomenon are part of the way that students will be assessed. They need to be able to take a science and engineering practice and bump it up against that phenomenon or problem and start to figure out how can I ask questions about this? How can I analyze data about this? How can I draw a model of this? How can I plan or carry out an investigation about this phenomenon? Then what they might do is take their understanding, their pre-understandings of the disciplinary core idea, and also bump that up against the phenomenon or the problem. They may have misconceptions that may not be consistent with the phenomenon, and then they start to question what, whether they really know the disciplinary core idea or not, and they continue to work with it. The same thing goes with the cross-cutting concept. They may look at something through a pattern. Can I try to figure out this phenomenon through a pattern or a cause and effect or scale, proportion, and quantity, and we start to bump up against that. As the students continue on through the lesson and they continue to start interacting with those three dimensions and the phenomenon or the problem that they are faced with, they start to gain a greater understanding of both the practice of the practices, the disciplinary core ideas, and, and the cross-cutting concepts. This is considered sense-making, and sense-making isn't new or just uh, specific to science. It is how we learn anything. And the longer that we do sense-making, the stronger those ideas come for students. This sense-making is what we think about as understanding in three dimensions, the science and engineering practices, the cross-cutting concepts, and the disciplinary core ideas. So when we think about contemporary science education, scientific literacy is not just a matter of listing a bunch of facts or being able to say, I can name Newton's laws, but it's really a habit of mind that develops over time. It's the ability to use these science and engineering practices interchangeably to figure out a problem. It's not a scientific method that goes from one to two to three, but rather a habit of mind of how we start to figure problems out. And the same thing goes with the cross-cutting concepts. It's a way of developing a habit of mind of how to figure out a phenomenon or a problem by using patterns or cross-cutting uh, or, uh, or cause and effect, or uh, scale, proportion, and quantity, or stability and change to understand the disciplinary core ideas. Elementary teachers may need more support. Uh, they may not, but they may, no, may need more support to excel with a subject that they may have less, uh, less experience with, or they may find a little bit more challenging. So we need to support each other as teachers. We need support through professional learning. We need support from uh, our administrators as well. Science education in elementary is not just a bunch of fun activities. So it really isn't something that we're asking students to just have fun with. But instead, we want them to have a hands-on and minds-on experience. So when they have a hands-on experience, are they also making sense of it in their brain? Can they articulate it either verbally or on paper or in a model? Can they ask questions? Can they present to their, to their fellow students, either in small groups or larger groups? So the science and engineering practices also give students the minds-on approach to how they can articulate their understanding. Scientific literacy requires lots of practice, reflection, and cognitive engagement. The students need to be able to think about these ideas and be able to apply them in lots of different ways. So the next thing I want to talk about is what was uh, in New York State. They have revised in April of 2021 the uh, timeline for these assessments. So we know that this year, in June of 2022, the last administration of the grade four test will be for the 1996 MST standards. Next year, there will be no grade four test at all, nor will there be a grade five test in New York State because that cohort of students will go on to the next year. But there will be an eighth grade test uh, that will be for our middle school students uh, for the MST 1996 standards. In June of 2024 will be the first administration of the New York State P-12 science standards, science learning standards in both grade five and grade eight. That will be the thrust of our conversation today. So if we think about it, the grade three students that are in the 2021 school year, 21-22 school year, will be the first to take that new grade five assessment. So let's review what's what we're thinking about for this assessment. So in 
uh, October of 2020, New York State released the performance learning learn level descriptors. Um, and you can see here that New York State uh, has given a, a level four, level three, level two, and it is the uh, outline for the matrix that they, they designed. Uh, New York State will use these documents to develop assessment questions and to guide their work. Um, you can find this on the New York State Education Department um, uh, a website in order to get more details. What I've done is I've actually pulled out um, one from each grade level, the forces and interaction from grade three, the waves and wa waves and information from grade four, and structure and properties of matter from grade five. These four, and I've, uh, these three um, rubric pieces that I've pulled give you an idea of what the level four, level three, level two, and level one will look like. You can also see that I have color coded the first two um, first two rubric areas uh, in order to be able to to talk about what the three dimensions are. So I've co color coded plan and conduct an investigation, which is a science and engineering practices. Uh, there's some other pieces in there as well with fair tests and variables that are controlled, uh, and it's mostly to collect evidence shows the effects that that cause and effect cross-cutting concept that's in green, and then of balanced and unbalanced forces on the motion of an object with the disciplinary core idea, and the use of evidence to construct an explanation of this phenomenon. So you can see I've looked at this. Um, I've kind of outlined this for you to be able to see that the three dimensions are in each one of these levels, and you can continue on down to the level one. Um, but this is one of those uh, documents that you can look to inform your instruction or to inform the classroom assessments that we have put together in Science 21. The next is, a, um, is an overview of uh, an item review checklist that is uh, something that New York State has been developing um, in order to assess something before it goes out to field testing or before these assessment items go out into uh, actual assessments at the grade four or at the grade eight level. And if you look at what I've, I've provided you here, if you see number three, one of the flags that is um, for these assessment items is can the specific disciplinary core idea be linked back to a foundational phenomenon. So that means that the students will be figuring out a phenomenon during the assessment. Just like our Science 21 lessons, we have identified the phenomenon that's in each uh, one of our lessons, but we want to be able to make sure that the students know that term and that they can see it and that they are familiar and are practiced with being able to put out, make sense of a phenomenon. The next one of these that I've highlighted is a, uh, is a question that the state is asking the assessment designers is, can a significant proportion of the task be completed successfully using rote knowledge? So if they do get a flag that that's a yes, that's another one of those items that they may not necessarily want to be able to share in, a, in an assessment question. So we don't want students to just memorize and regurgitate information. They have to use the information that's in the assessment item. The next three are really the specifics of the disciplinary core idea, the science and engineering plan, uh, science and engineering practice, and the cross-cutting concept. These three elements must be in every single um, cluster of questions so that we can be able to work through what they look like. So you can see that the commitment for our state uh, assessment writers on those three dimensions are rather important. So we next look at one of the, the items that was shared in some state meetings uh, for assessment. And this is a, an article that was written by Dr. Harris, Dr. Krejcik, Dr. Pellegrino, Dr. Hadel, uh, and Dr. DeBarger. Um, and it is about designing knowledge in use assessments to promote deeper learning. So um, Dr. Krychek is somebody who is a national leader in the next generation science standards um, and is somebody who works, who has been uh, informative. Some of the work that he's been doing has been informative of our, of the entire state team and the national team about how to use knowledge in use. How does that, what does that mean? It is about the ability to, for somebody to have their knowledge and they can show what they look, uh, how they're using that um, in the assessment itself. So this might be one of those articles uh, to look for and be able to work with your, your staff or for, with you as, your, as a teacher. So let's take a look at the elementary li uh, level science test samples that were released in, at the end of April by New York State Education Department. You can find them on the state education department. But generally what we're going to look for is a general formula. This does not go for every single question or, con uh, or 
question cluster, but it may be something that you will see as a pattern within the assessments itself. The first thing we're looking at is a scenario, so some kind of setting the stage for this cluster of questions. Then the next might be a set of data or some pictures that they're looking at, which is data as well, qualitative data. It may be qualitative or quantitative data that the students need to make sense of. So between the scenario and the data, that will provide the evidence that the students will use to be able to answer the questions that are there. Then there'll be a cluster of questions, um, two, three, four, depending on, on how that item is written, but they may pair only an SEP with a disciplinary core idea, a cross-cutting concept with a disciplinary core idea, or all three of them might be in the assessment question uh, itself. Uh, when I worked with, I actually have had the great pleasure of going to Stanford University to work with their um, NGSS assessment team, and I learned a lot more about how difficult it is to really write three-dimensional questions. So even they are suggesting that they that two-dimensional questions or clusters of two-dimensional and three-dimensional questions are probably the best way for students to be able to uh, demonstrate their understanding of all three dimensions. And I put here literacy because students will be reading complex scenarios or complex uh, pieces of, of, of uh, literature in order to provide evidence for their answers. Uh, students will meet, need to be familiar with complex science, science tests to be successful on those assessments. And this is one of the, the pieces from the test sampler about beaver. So you can see that there is both a, uh, an image of a beaver that um, is a model or at least a diagram of some of the um, particular facts about a beaver that is important for this test cluster. But then there is a complex, uh, complex lit piece of literature that the students will need to unpack during that assessment. Um, in Science 21, we have been consistently using informational text to help students try to unpack that that work. So it, one of those, those parts of the Science 21 program that we're really very proud of, that the students will be able to look to a piece of, not an, of inf informational text that they'll need to make sense of um, in the, the text, but they have teacher and can unpack that together as a group, though there's lots of ways to approach that complex text. We also provide them models and either uh, informational text combined with models so the students can start to use this. If you look very carefully down here, there's going to be a test item that looks similar at the bottom of this energy transfer where the energy comes from food. So there is some ideas that we want teachers to look at both the, the models um, and the informational text for students to make sense of it. So the first question we're going to look at is partially aligned. They, they, uh, a lot of these questions have multiple performance expectations that the students will be uh, addressing. There may be multiple science and engineering practices in the cluster of questions, and there may be a, uh, more than one cross-cutting concept. I'm focusing on just one because you can see that plan and conduct an investigation to provide evidence of the effects of balanced and unbalanced forces on the motion of an object. You may, and that is a third grade standard, as you can see by the code 3-PS2-1. The three represents that this is a third grade standard on a fifth grade test. So we wanna be able to be very careful that, um, that we're aligning the language that we see on the assessment to um, in, in the standards to the language that we see on the assessment. Um, in Science 21, we have been very, very close to the standards to be able to pull that in language into our assessment uh, questions and into our lesson uh, assessments, our, our lesson questions as well. So if you look at this, this first one is about bowling. And remember that we're looking to align it to balanced and unbalanced forces. There's also the word collisions that show up in that um, in this assessment cluster. But if you look at this image, it's not just an image. There is an example of showing that A and an arrow to B and an arrow to C. Students using Science 21 will immediately look at this and go, this is a model. I, they're trying to show a relationship between A to B to C, and it keeps on getting closer and they have to figure out what that might mean. So one of the questions that you may look at for this is this is the first one, which is construct an explanation. Remember, that's one of our, 
uh, science and engineering practices um, with evidence for what happens when the amount of motion when the amount of motion energy the ball has as the ball moves from position shown in photograph A to the position shown in photograph B. So being able to construct an explanation is, is something that students will need to practice. Um, and once again, they are unpacking an image in order to collect evidence. So the evidence is partially in the informational text here, but partially it can be uh, gotten from the imagery or the model that they're showing. The next question is, um, the kinetic energy is actually not in the standards, that word. So in this question, they define kinetic energy so that all of the item answers uh, are based on that kinetic energy, but they've defined it as an object is the energy that an object has due to its motion. So being able to talk once again, go back to the model and be able to unpack the images from B to C and what is happening in there. And these are the four uh, oper or four options that the student has to choose from. So that is also a, a little bit of a tricky item for the students if they have not had any experience. So in Science 21, we build our lessons around that type of experience. Number three question here has to students to talk about zero. So in the standards, it actually has zero net force as one of the, the elements in the disciplinary core idea. So they have to be able to understand what balanced or unbalanced is and whether the zero net force is either more than the zero net force or less than zero net force. And I'll give you an example of how Science 21 uh, addresses this very specifically. But you look at these questions and they may not be what a typical fifth grade student has encountered before. So if we look at this next uh, part of the, the question, so this is continuing on in this cluster of questions. Photograph B was then added to the model and there is more information. So we're looking at um, another type of question where the students are talking about the strength of the force um, and whether it is the, the same or different. So same and different also goes with our patterns that we're looking at um, in these types of questions. So in Science 21, in grade three, lesson two, we really struggled with this balanced and unbalanced forces. And you can see I'm bringing in, I'm highlighting, this is the, the language here, but I'm highlighting this in three dimensions in our, our colors of our three dimensions to be able to help you identify what we're actually looking for in this lesson. In this lesson, what we're actually getting students to do is to identify the forces and what is the direction of movement. So on the student page, we've highlighted unbalanced forces. So they're being confronted with this language immediately in these lessons. And we reinforce that balance, unbalanced and balanced forces over and over again. The students get to choose an arrow and then they write the force number of, of that arrow in the box. And then they choose a different arrow to demonstrate an unbalanced force. And they put that number in the box as well. So it's a clear way to see that if the numbers are not the same, that it is becomes an unbalanced force. And then the students will identify the direction of that force. So which one has a greater force and at what magnitude? We don't need to get to all that, but we're trying to get to them understand this in a concrete way. Um, in the second part, when we're looking at balanced forces, the students will once again choose an arrow that they want to, that they want to, they get a whole choice if you look at the arrows from the right. Then they must choose a balanced arrow and they write that in the box and then they would circle the zero net force box. And if you can see here, we didn't just do it in one dimension. We looked at this as um, in, in two different uh, orientations for the teacher, for the students to be able to understand that it isn't just left and right, but it could be up and down. There's lots of ways for the, the students to be able to demonstrate balanced and unbalanced forces. This is only lesson two and we reinforce that in other lessons as well. So here's another set, uh, question sequence that is um, around two performance expectations. And once again, this is a grade three uh, standard, and we know that because it says three dash ESS two dash one. The three represents that is the third grade standard. And we're also looking through this, and we're we're seeing that I have I articulated the yellow to the yellow, and you can read your standards by being able to identify the codes and where they're at. The specificity of the disciplinary core idea gets them to look at patterns of weather across different times and areas and things that they can make predictions and the range of a typical weather conditions, which is usually referred to as climate. 
So if you look at this question that is uh, on the test sampler from the state ed, you can see that they are looking at a map. They're looking at data in a chart, which is our science and engineering practice of data analysis. Uh, and then they're asked to identify the evidence that explains why the climate in New York City is cooler than the climate of Rio de Janeiro, even though they receive the same amount of yearly precipitation. So they have to be able to identify both the map and where they are. They have to be able to identify um, the data and be able to interpret this data. In question number five, this is actually a line graph that they that they work with. And remember, this is a grade three standard on a grade five assessment. Um, and they then have to look at the pattern in the data on the graphs and be able to look at this. So Science 21 looked at, there's a lesson in grade three, unit three. Um, it's lesson eight that they are working with. And what they're doing is the same two um, performance expectations that identified for this uh, question cluster, be able to look at these things that are in there as well. So in our assessment, we actually give them a task. Where do you want to go? They are given a free trip to somewhere in these four great, wonderful locations. And we provide them with a travel brochure that once again shows a map. I, I didn't steal this from the state. <laughs> we actually used this uh, from our own minds from reading the standards. We ex extracted this idea from the standards. So if you look at this, that gives them idea what the students are going to do is they their culminating activity is where would you like to go? What would you like to do during that time of year based on weather? Um, and what kind of equipment would you need to bring in order to be able to do that activity? We also give them data, which is both temperature and precipitation data. We've actually broken out a little bit further into rain and snow because we want the students to maybe the question could have been, you know, what is look at two different data samples, uh, both the rain and the snow in uh, Rio de Janeiro. You can see that there is zero snow amounts in a, in a typical year in uh, in Rio. Um, and then what we do is the students construct the graphs and then they look at this data and are able to work with this. This is the teacher uh, answer key so that they know that uh, the, the students can graph it correctly. We've also scaffolded this question. So for students who are who struggle a little bit with the, with the uh, task of being able to construct a, a bar chart, um, we've actually constructed half of it and they are able to model it. It may be something we also provide in our, our, our manual the ability for students to do this from scratch. So depending on the students, you could either differentiate in your classroom with a partially constructed uh, chart or the students construct the chart from, from scratch. But if you look at the data that's actually given on the, um, on the assessment sampler, it's very similar and the students are, are, are able to um, look at, the, um, at the, the patterns that they see in these data and answer questions accordingly. So I'm really happy that our Science 21, we were very, very close to the standards uh, and our, wrote our questions in that same way. So we're kind of uh, happy with the way this goes. Uh, this is a, a slide uh, from one of the um, of one of the presentations, one of the updates from State Ed. And they're talking about the performance uh, performance tasks that students will be doing during the year. And you can see that there are some really interesting things that they've added. No longer will it be in a specific window. There will be curriculum embedded investigations um, that must be completed during the same year as the written assessment. Um, and then uh, they will be plot piloting them this year uh, in the 2022 school year. And the, they will assess the performance expectations. So you can see there's, there's some new information. And they're based on, you can see New York's participation in the stackable, instructionally embedded, portable science assessments project, which is a multi-state project. Um, and New York is just one of those participants. And what they're doing is creating a bank of these instructionally embedded science tasks. But the state has actually created a document that was released um, on uh, May 6th in 2022. And there are two pieces that they talk about in that memo from the state uh, education department. It is the elementary and uh, and the EL uh, in elementary and intermediate level science. And this is a, a quote from the document itself. Um, these tests are designed to measure the knowledge and they are multiple choice in the uh, spring of the uh, starting in 2024. They also talk about the required investigations and these are the classroom embedded tasks. Uh, and if we go a little bit further, there are four required tasks that are going to be required of elementary level science. Uh, and these are the tasks that they are. They are not yet viewable. 
uh, or at least I haven't seen them at, as of this recording, um, but you can see that they are aligned to very specific performance uh, level, performance expectations. In these <clears throat> embedded tasks, or these SIPs, um, the, there will be teacher's directions, student directions, an answer pack, a scoring key, and a scoring rubric. And they've actually produced all of the materials that, uh, that the students will need for that task. And you can see they're written in a way for um, one for every two students. So I'm assuming that these students will be working in pairs, even though they may be recording their uh, information individually, they'll be working in pairs to do these activities. And they can also be uh, sprinkled throughout the year. They're not going to be through a set window. Window. So it could be that you could do the first task in September, the second task in December, the third task in February, and the fourth task in March or April uh, before the assessment. So they have really changed uh, a lot of this assessment design for elementary. And once again, this is a, a, a grade level and domain status update for both elementary um, biology and chemistry, but I'm going to focus a little bit more uh, on just the elementary uh, because of Science 21. Uh, but they're also looking at computer-based testing for five and eight, and they're going to be doing uh, some field testing on that as well. Uh, so just so you remember that on the Science 21 website, there is a scope and sequence aligned to the uh, to all of the units that we have, uh, and you can find that very easily looking on our website. Uh, but these titles of these units are not made up just for Science 21. They are the the titles of the standard pages that are there. Uh, also remember that there is a pacing guide on our stand on our website that you can see how many lessons for are expected to be done in each one of the months. Uh, and even though we have not yet launched our grade four, we'll be launching it in September of 2022. Um, we have already have that uh, embedded in there. So thank you for your attention today. And I look forward to seeing you in Science 21 professional learning in the future. Thanks. Bye.